แล้วเสียงเสียงมันจะเป็นยังอ๋อเสียงก็จะคือกลางวานในห้องนี้โอเคดีเลยครับหมายถึงว่าดูเด็กวันในรูปยังไงต่อครับจะทดสอบอะไรไหมครับหรือว่าเสียงเข้าไหมครับโอเคได้ครับเดี๋ยวผมขอเตรียมเตรียมอ่านโพยก่อนแป๊บหนึ่งปิดไมค์ก่อนได้นะครับ
Nice to meet you. So you can hear me well, like this. It is okay. The, the noise, the voice is okay. Okay. Okay, I think we can start. I think a few, uh, a few guys we are right after, but I think we have to keep the time uh, to be punctual a little bit because we have the testing and we have plenty of wines to test today. All right, so shall we start? I hope uh, in case that I don't speak, I, I speak, um, you don't understand some terminology, some words, so please interrupt me, okay? All right, uh, welcome to the class today. So it is more or less like a lecture together with a workshop. So we will test the why and we will uh, test the food also. That's why this course is more or less like Eno Gastronomy. But first of all, the theme of today is Italian red wine. So we will emphasize only red wine. So my name, I am Falan Sisuriyachai. My name is quite long. You can call me Falan. Okay, that is um, my name in Thai. And currently, if you look at... Uh, just a moment. Okay, so the content of today, what we are going to do, we are going to, of course, I have to explain why I'm here and who am I. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my biography and after that, I will give you a little bit about the story of Italian wine. And of course, after, we are going to talk about red wine, how to make red wine, the classification of wine, and important red wines. And at the end, so the last part is going to be something that, as a chef, as, you, as I know that some of you are chefs, I think this part is going to be very important because it can give you the idea how to pair the right wine with the right food. So you can apply this in any cuisine. So let's start. Okay. I'm not so sure if I look the same in this picture, but this picture has been taken um, a few years ago. So I hope that I look the same. You can judge. Okay. Let's talk about my background. So my first background, I study chemical technology. Let's say I'm a chemical engineer. Um, and after that, I decided to continue to study petroleum engineer. And of course, Myanmar, Thailand, we have petroleum. All right. And currently, I am also teaching in this field. But um, you can see at the end of this picture in this slide that I study in Italy. So I spent three years doing PhD in georesources and geotechnology in university of Bologna, one of the oldest universities in the world. But it is not only three years I, I, that I lived there, because I spent almost eight years living in Italy. And therefore, living in Italy, can you eat just Thai food? No, you have to adapt yourself to Italian culture. Eight years is long enough. So I can speak Italian, well, I hope I can say fluently, but the best part is this. During I stay there, of course, you have many friends. I have many Italian friends. I was invited uh, to the party. I always pick the cheapest wine, the cheapest one, because, you know, I don't know which one to take. And one time, my Italian friend just said to me, hey, Falan, you can buy the cheap wine, but if you know the quality of the wine, you can get the best one. And that is the point that I changed myself. So I decided, okay, I have to do something. I have to learn something. And therefore, I decided to go to a school while doing PhD. I went to Y school. And that school is called AIS. In Italian, we call Associazione Italiana Sommelier. And I started from level number one, level number two, and at the end, it, become, it became my passion, and I decided to do the, um, the, um, the examination. And this is what I obtained. This is the certificate of professional 
sommelier, Italian sommelier. And that's why I, nowadays I use this uh, to conduct a class. Okay, so I hope now you can feel ensure that the knowledge you obtain today, it is certified from me. So let's start with the story of Italian wine. So anybody um, drinks wine? So everybody drinks wine. We drink only the product, but sometimes we do not know about the story. But actually, for Italian wine, it has been long um, grown in, in Italy. So let's say that the first group of people who brought the grape wine to Italy was Greek, Etruscan, and there are three regions that you uh, that I mark here. So these are the three first regions where wines has been um, uh, planted. So including Toscana or Tuscany, Puglia, Apulia, and Sicilia or Sicily. Okay, so these are three important, uh, three oldest region of the wine uh, growing. And after that, there is a, a Roman Empire, and Roman was very important people who spread uh, the growing of the wine everywhere. So that technology was amazing. And after that, you know that Italy used to be separate states before, and there was a unification in 19th century, mid of 19th century. So this is the benefit for wine making in Italy, because during the independent states, each state has their own style. And once Italy unified, they, take, they took all the things from all the states. And that's why nowadays, Italian winemaking is very diverse compared to other countries. And that makes Italian wine to be very fascinating. And after unification of the country, Italy still doesn't have a lot of, uh, how can I say, the motivation to make the great wine. And until, the emerging of the middle class people, so the um, requirement, request of the high quality wine start. And that comes to the next slide that I want to show. So this is the big change of Italian wine nowadays. That was the emerging of the super Tuscan wine. So I, heard, I hope that you heard this name before. Super Tuscan or the um, important red wine from Tuscany. Okay, so that was um, the result of this process. So, um, nowadays, Italy is the largest wine producer, and in terms of uh, exporter, uh, Italy is number one also, in terms of amount. So, as I talk about Super Tuscan wine, okay, these are the example of the Super Tuscan wine. Unfortunately, we are not going to test Super Tuscan wine, but of course, there are many other interesting wines to test today. So today, as I mentioned that the topic is red wine, Italian red wine. So what is a red wine? You might say, oh, the wine that has a red color, that is correct also, but actually, in terminology, red wine is a wine that is made from red grape or a mix of many types of red grapes. So it can be just one single grape or Mantai grapes, or what we call blend, okay? And the color is not just red. Actually, the color is not very red, but the color ranges from purple red, ruby red, garnet red, and the last one is orange tone. Okay, so this is very important because the tone of red wine tells about the age, the state of evolution of the wine. So the purple age is the youngest one. The ruby is the ready one. The garnet is going to be quite aged wine. And the last one, the orange tone, probably the wine is off already. So be careful when you go to drink red wine. Some of the red wine, the color can be off already. That tells also that the wine is totally out. Okay, so you don't drink that wine. So what is the cause of this red color? And that is this, the pigment that is called anthocyanin. And actually, this is also a chemical that yields benefit to our health. It is one of the things that make you feel, uh, make you look younger, make you look um, uh, fresher, because it is 
antioxidant. Okay, so from now on, drink red wine. Okay, and besides that, not only anthocyanin that can be found in red wine because red wi uh, anthocyanin is found at the skin of the red grapes. So if you want to have the red color, you have to extract from the skin. And during this process, you obtain also another thing that is called tannin. Tannin is another chemical that makes uh, your tongue dry. Okay, so actually this is another chemical that you find in the red wine, and it is called tannic wine. So red wine has the color and has also the tannin city. We, call, we can call the wine is tannic at the same time. So um, this is something that is different from white wine. So, once we talk about red wine, there is also a good friend of red wine, or a relative of red wine, and actually that is a rosé wine, or in Italian we call vino rosato. So why I put the rosé wine here? Today we don't test the red wine, oh, sorry, we don't test the rosé wine, but I just have to inform you that the making of rosé wine is more or less almost the same like red wine. So actually most of the rosé wine is made from red grapes, okay? As I said before, anthocyanin is found on the skin. So if we extract fully, we will have the color totally red. But if we perform things that we call partial, partial maceration, we allow grape to contact with the juice for just a period of time. So we extract only part of the color, so the color becomes pink. So that's why I put the rosé wine today. So, the rosé wine may be made from red grapes, but be careful. The serving, the characteristic is closer to white wine, okay? So this is something to remember. In Italy, we also have very good rosé wine, especially in the middle, in the central of Italy. And also in the north, you have a champagne, champagne style uh, sparkling wine that is called Francia Corta, okay? In case that you have a chance to go to Italy, don't forget Francia Corta Rosé. So this picture shows a summary of the wine making process. Um, this, the first step is to press the juice and after that, this is the fermentation. For red wine, remember that the fermentation must be conducted juice and skin together and inside here you have to stir the, um, the process the whole time to let the juice to be in contact with the skin. We call this, oops, sorry. We call this as a maceration. After the quality of the wine is ready, you uh, move the juice to the next step, which is aging. Red wine is normally aged in the barrel. White wine is normally aged in the tank. So uh, it can be slightly different, but sometimes red wine can be aged in the tank as well. And after that, the wine has to be clarified for uh, selling because we do not want to drink the wine that has a sediment. That's why the wine has to be clean before. So you have to remove the sediments, clarification, filtration, and after that it is bottled and served to you on the table today. So this is the overall of the process of red wine. Um, next. Sorry, sometimes it's stuck. <laughs> okay, now we are going to talk about the characteristic of red wine. Um, actually, when you test the red wine, so there are six components that you will be able to perceive. The first thing is the residual, residual sugar. Okay, some of you might be very sensitive to sugar, but most of the time, um, when we try to clarify the sugar level in, red, in normal red wine, we will say that, oh, it is um, dry. So actually the term dry means you don't perceive the sugar. Okay, so remember dry doesn't mean that it makes your tongue dry because that is another component. Okay, so when you say dry means you don't perceive sugar. And the next one is alcohol content. So what is the alcohol content? When you drink something alcoholic, what is the feeling? So it feels like you, it burns inside the cavity. So that is 
um, the alcohol content. Next, okay, is a similar thing. This is a good alcohol. This is poly alcohol. So as a chef, I think you heard the term umami, right? Roundness. Actually, this component is a complex alcohol, and this results in the roundness of the wine or um, the the mellowness of the wine, umami of the wine. Okay, so I highlight them in red color. So this is a soft component, and there are other three components that I highlight in green. The first one is acid or acidity. So you know. Lime, lemon, fruit. So you have acidity. Also in wine, you still have acidity. Certain um, level of acidity. Next is the tannin. So what is the tannin? Again, it is something that dries up your sal saliva. It is um, probably you know persimmon, the fruit, right? When you eat persimmon when it is not mature, your cavity is totally dry because it. Close your saliva glands. So this is the same effect we call astringent or tannic or tannin. The last component, most people might not think that wine contains this, and actually it is salt. So grape grows in certain region, and it has to extract the minerals from the land. And at the end, this salt. Is presented inside the fruit also, and that's why today you will test also that the wine has salinity. So this is the part that is called salt. And in total, the green color, acid, tannin, and salt, we call the rough component. And the great wine should have the balance of these two parts. All right. So now you start to understand how can I find the wine that is balanced and changing, shifting from soft part to rough part, the wine will change the character, and it's going to be best with different type of the food. I'm going to explain this later. So usually, the red wine should be drunk at the temperature around 14 to 18. So Italian people might say, "Oh, drink at the room temperature." Of course. In Italy, the room temperature is quite cooler, but you cannot say that in Thailand, in Southeast Asia, no, because the room temperature here can be 25, can be 30, and the temperature of the wine will be too too high. So, um, I have a trick for you guys. In case that you have to serve the red wine, usually I also say it to my student: if the red wine is stored at the room temperature, which is quite hot, you can put the wine in the fridge. The fridge, okay, about 15 minutes, 15 minutes before serving. So the temperature is going to be lower slightly to this level. And why we have to serve at this level? Because at this temperature, the balance between sugar level, the tannic is going to be perfect. If the wine is too hot, you will feel more sugar. And if the wine is too cold, you will feel more tanninity, tannic. So the wine is going to be totally tannic. So you have to serve the wine at the right temperature. So the lighter rate, 14 degree. The heavier rate, 18 degrees. Okay, now we come to the part that is getting more interesting. So how about the classification of the wine in Italy? So this covers both red wine and white wine. So in Italy, if you go to Italy, if you go to supermarket, you will see four different classifications. So the top one, the top one is the best one, of course. It is called DOCG. It is abbreviated from Denominazione Origine Controllata e Garantita. So what does it mean? It means that the wine has to be produced under a very strict control. But more than just controlling, the wine should be able to guarantee to the Customer, that it is the same quality. Any bottle you pick, it should be great quality. So that is the the um, um, explanation of this DOCG. But next one, DOC. Okay, this is the biggest group of the wine in Italy. We call DOC without G, of course, and the name is just Denominazione Origine Controllata. Without garantita, so it means that the wine has to be produced under the controlling system. 
For example, if I buy this Chianti, it means that this bottle of Chianti should be produced with certain regulation. I can use this grape only, and it has to be aged at specific time only. And if it is more, I can add up the name like the Reserva, or if I have more alcohol, I can use the term Superiore. So there will be more specific uh, terminology. Next one, EGT. Okay. Certain producers that are located inside DOCG region, DOC region, they might feel like, oh, I don't want to follow the rules. Can I break the rules? Yes, of course, you can break the rule, but you cannot use this level. They can use this level, and actually it is called Indicazione Geografica Tipica. But nowadays, this T, sometimes it is changed to P, which is Indicazione Geografica Protetta. So it's the same, okay? So the quality, well, it is very difficult because most of the Super Tuscan wine are under this classification. It means that it can be great, it can be mm, something that you didn't expect. So, if you ask me which one is the best, it is difficult to explain which one is the best because it is related to regions, it is related to the wine producer also. And the last one, the one that um, is produced without um, strict uh, rules, and that is called uh, VDT, Vino the tavola, and in most of the countries in Europe, you will have this level. So this is not going to be uh, something, it's going to be easy wine to drink, but less uh, controlling system. So now we know the, um, we know the um, classifications, and today we will try to detect the classification of the wine also. Okay, so now let's look at the Italian red grapes. Okay, so I start from the north, to the south. So these are five grapes that represent, I mean, I may say the overall country of Italy, but actually in Italy you have more than 500 grapes. Okay, and to remember all the names I think is quite difficult. So today we'll start with something simple. The king of the Italian grape, Nebbiolo. Okay, Nebbiolo. So Nebbia means the fog. And actually you can see that the grape seems to under the covering of the fog. So this is Nebbiolo. You can find this in Piemonte, Lombardia. Next one, Sangiovese, or the grape of the Jupiter. So this is the grape that you find mainly in the central of Italy, Tuscany. Okay, Tuscany. We will test also this. Next, so central of Italy to the south of Italy, you will find Monte Pusciano. And the full, the full name is Monte Busciano d'Abruzzo, and it means that you can find this mainly in the region of Abruzzo. So this is also the grape that is very um, high body, beautiful color. Okay. Next one to the south, Aglianico. Okay, Aglianico is a grape that love the um, volcanic soil. So you can find Aglianico in Campania, in Basilicata. And this grape produces a wine with great tannicity, so the wine can be aged for very long. And to represent the real salt, the island of Sicily. And we will test this wine also today with the Sicilian food, and that is called Nero Davola. Nero Davola. And that is from Sicily. So you can take the picture. Okay. But not only that. Right? So I list also. Many grapes, okay, there are many grapes, but I, just, I will just highlight something that we will test today. So, we will test the first one, Barbera, okay, maybe it is too small for you, but I can't pronounce. The first one is Barbera, and actually this one you find mainly in the north of Italy, but the one that you will test today comes from the central part of Italy. So, I might say Barbera can be everyday wine. Then, um, you have this mix, okay, there are three grapes, Corvina, Molinara and Rodinella. So these are the mix to make very important wine of Italy and it is called Amarone. Okay, probably you heard this name before, Amarone, but today we are not going to test Amarone, but we are going to test a kind of little sister of Amarone. So that is called um, Ripasso. 
Okay, today we are going to test also Negro Amaro. So this is a grape from the south of Italy, Puglia. So the wine is very powerful and you will feel the fruit. So this is lovely to, to test also. Then we will have Nerello Mascalese. So this is very um, light wine, but very elegant, okay? We will have also Primitivo, so this is the representative of the south of Italy, Puglia. And this grape is uh, brought also to the USA, and nowadays it is called Sinfandel, but actually they are the same grape. And okay, so these are the list of the grape that we are going to test today. So, besides Italian grape, uh, okay. Italian grapes. Italy is, a, is still nowadays can produce international grapes. Okay, so these are also the list of the international grapes that you can find. And if you compare with the origins, I might say Italy can do very well also, especially in Tuscany where they produce super Tuscan wine. So these are the example Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc. Okay, these are from the Bordeaux, right? You have Carignan, which is in Italy they call Carignano, Camener, Sanso, Game, Grenache, Malbec, Merlot, Petit Verdot, and the last one, Pinot Noir. When it is brought to Italy, it is called Pinot Nero. And you can obtain a great bottle of Pinot Nero also in Italy. So these are also the wines that you can find in Italy. All right. Now, um, let's look at the important, okay, before I talk about the grapes, but if you try to remember the grapes, I might say, it's going to be very difficult because when you get the bottle, you probably don't see the name of the grapes. But the thing that you will see on the bottle is going to be what we call designation. You see the classification already, right? Under the classification, you, you, you will have the specific name and that is called designation. So today we are going to talk about important designation of Italy. From the north, okay, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to remember all the things and make the test at the end of the class. No, actually there is no test. We will test the wine, but there is no uh, paper test. So north of Italy, I might say it is the land of important red wines. Okay, so um, there are many amazing red wines. So if I have to point out here, I'm going to put this one, Barolo. Okay, Barolo is from Piemonte. And the second one is Barbaresco. So these two labels, these two designations are made of Nebbiolo, the king of the Italian grape. And I might say that these two are the mo one of the most important Italian red wines that you have to try one, once. Another thing that I want to point out is this one, Amar Amarone, the one I talked before that is made from three grapes, but actually it can be more than three. This grape is from the, the region called Veneto. Okay, if you know Venice, actually, Venice is located inside the region of Veneto, and they produce this Amarone della Val Policella. So this is also very beautiful um, wine, very heavy, but still can balance with a good acidity and you will enjoy drinking this together with cheese or with uh, grilled food. Okay, so let's look a little bit on the details of Nebbiolo, Barbares uh, the wine that is made from Nebbiolo. So you have Barolo, Barbaresco, and you also have other names many wines that are made from Nebbiolo. But as I say, Barolo, Barbaresco are the most important wines that are made from Nebbiolo. So what is the character of Barolo? So Barolo is very high in terms of tannin. And this wine needs a lot of time of aging. Certain bottles can go up to 20 years, 30 years. When I was a student, I, was, I received a gift of a bottle of Barbar Barolo of 1987 and believe it or not the wine is still good quality good acidity drinkable I love it okay so 
it means that this grape can be aged for a very long time. So from Barolo, Barbaresco, actually, the name are very B, starting with B, and the character are very close to each other. But somebody might ask me, what is the difference between Barolo and Barbaresco? Besides the writing that is different, of course, they are from different regions, but just next to each other. And the character, the Barolo, is going to be heavier compared to Barbaresco. Barbaresco is going to be mature um, at a faster time. So if you buy the bottle, okay, for aging, maybe Barolo is going to be best. And Barolo, Barbaresco is going to be ready earlier. Then you have also Guinara, Valtellina that are from different regions. And the character is going to be softer compared to these two. So another wine that I want to uh, explain to you is uh, Valpolicella. So inside Valpolicella is made from um, three grapes that I said to you before, but there are also many levels starting from the classical, then superiore means higher alcohol, and after that you can ferment with the remaining of the Amarone after more powerful wine. So this is something that we test today, ripasso, okay? And the next level, Amarone, is the wine that is made from semi-dry grapes. So the wine is going to be very heavy because part of water is going to be vaporized. So for the central of Italy, still many things to try, but if I have to mention, I'm going to mention only two first. Brunello di Montalcino, okay, this is the place where I study I mean, for the wine course. So this is uh, in Tuscany. So this wine is made from Sangiovese, but this is the great, the best Sangiovese, and the bottle is very important. And if you remember, before we have Barolo, then Barbaresco, and you can add another B, which is Brunello. So actually, it's a three Bs, three Bs, three important Bs, right? And today. We, I'm going to point out this, Chianti. So, when we talk about Italian wine that represent Italy, Chianti is going to be the first name. So, Chianti Classical is something we are going to study a little bit. So, when we talk about Chianti, okay, Chianti is very large region, and the quality can be varied from one to another. Actually, you can see the label as a Chianti, DOCG. And you will see also Chianti Classical DOCG. Actually, the Chianti Classical is going to be higher in terms of quality. So if you look for the higher quality wine, Chianti Classical, the quality is more guaranteed from my point of view. Okay? Chianti is made from Sangiovese, of course. And under the name Chianti Classical, you also have different quality. Chianti Classical with certain year, Chianti Classical Reserva, more long time of aging, and Chianti Classical Gran Selezione, means the producer selects something best to represent their first wine, first level. So this is Chianti Classical, and we will test Chianti also today. And you have the symbol of the black cup here. Now, we arrive to the south, okay? The south of Italy, um, too many grapes. And, of course, there are many interesting wines, starting from Taurasi, uh, Aglianico, uh, and then around here where you have the volcano. So this is the region that you can grow wine that love the volcanic soil, okay? And uh, the hill, this is the region where you can also find the red wine with bold body, like Primitivo, Negro Amaro, and we will test today also. And so you have two islands, and these two islands also produce great red wines. Everything good in Italy, okay? All the regions, you always have the, uh, good representative wines. In Sicily, okay, you have Negro Ma sorry, you have a Nero Davola, and in the island of uh, Sardinia, you also have great interna uh, international grapes, and the wine is also lovely. So, this is a wrap for the wines 
the part of wines, okay? But now we have to know a little bit from the food also. I think you guys, majority of you guys are chef, probably you know this already. However, to, um, to enjoy, let's say, to enjoy the wine and food pairing, I think you probably have to look at this because this is going to be the partitioning of the test of the food according to Italian enogastronomy. So, okay, the picture sounds, looks like anatomy of the tongue or the cavity inside the mouth. But these are four major tests that we know already. Saltiness, bitterness, sourness, sweetness. Okay, of course, saltiness is a sensation that you feel when you eat salt, like sodium chloride. Next one, bitterness, but in Italian enogastronomy, it is written as bitter tendency. So why is that? Because you never expect the food to be bitter. Maybe in certain dishes in um, Southeast Asia, you can expect to have the bitterness. But in Italian food, you don't expect the food to be bitter. That's why the scale of bitterness is reduced to just the bitter tendency. Okay? Similar to sour tendency. Okay. As a Thai, I love papaya salad. You add many uh, tests, you add the sourness, you add the lime. But in Italian food, okay, this is also reduced to sour tendency. So prob if you test Italian food, you probably don't find many Italian food that have the sour sourness. But they try to reduce, they add just a little bit of uh, lime or lemon to, uh, to lift up the test, right? Sweetness, okay, sweetness in this case is a sensation that is linked to sugar. Okay, and actually, this is the terminology used for sweet dishes, dessert, chocolate, something like that. But some chocolate is not sweet, okay? But not only that, not only that for tests, that is the test from the test bud. But in Italian enogastronomy, they also add something else that is what we call the tactile sensation. The first one, Sweet tendency, okay, we have sweet, sweetness, but what is a sweet tendency? Actually, sweet tendency is a sensation that you feel when you test specific uh, material. For example, you chew the rice in your mouth, you feel it is sweet because a mindless breaks the um, uh, whatever. Eat the seafood. So you feel the, the sweetness that comes from the material. You eat pumpkin. Okay, pumpkin is also sweet without adding of sugar. So this is what we call sweet tendency. Okay, sweet tendency. Next one is fattiness. Fattiness is a tactile sensation. So what this is from? Fattiness is obtained, is, uh, you can feel the fattiness when you eat something that is a solid fat, like cheese or the red yolk. So if you eat just these things, you will feel that these kind of things cover your tongue and you need something to remove from your tongue. So usually the fattiness comes from cheese, red yolk, okay? And the next one is oiliness. It is a fat also, but it is in different form. Oiliness is a liquid fat, like olive oil, oil that you use for frying the food. So we call this as the oiliness, okay? So one thing that is going to be very tricky, you know butter, right? Butter. Butter, the temperature that butter is going to melt is 35. So usually when you test the butter, the butter is going to change from fattiness to oiliness in the mouth. But there is another material that is very similar to butter and that is margarine. Margarine melts at 40 degrees. So when you take margarine, the melting point of, so your body temperature is 37. So margarine is still, um, it's going to be fattiness, not oiliness. Okay, so this is the rule of cooking, of replacing um, butter and margarine. 
Okay, some people might say, oh, I don't want to take the products from cow. I want margarine that is made from plant. But this is the thing that cannot be replaced, which is the sensation of fattiness and oiliness. So why I say that? Because these two things require different wines. And the last, or last, here, there is another one that is called succulence. So what is a succulence? It is related to this picture. Have you ever tested the beef cooked medium rare, right? So when you eat this medium rare uh, steak, you feel like, oh, the salivation, the blood, the thing, the water, the mouth watering system. So this is actually the sensation that explained by the term succulence. Anything that you eat and you feel salivation, so this is the term succulence, okay? It doesn't have to be just the steak. It can be also something else, like you eat uh, good chocolate, uh, chocolate cake. You have the salivation system in the mouth. So that is also the term that is called succulence. It's not done yet. There are also other things. The last three things, but this is quite easy. This is quite simple. The first is spiciness. Okay, it's a sensation when you eat or taste something with spice. Okay, like a clove, like a cinnamon, like a black pepper. And so actually it, um, it's a sensation that is linked to the spice that you use. Next one, aromaticity. So this is the sensation linked to the herbs, aromatic herbs. And usually, some of the meat, some of the material also has its aromaticity also. Like eggs also has its aroma. Um, cucumber has also its aroma, right? The last one, okay, is kind of summary of the whole sensation. We call test olfactive persistence. All the tests, once you consume, once you, um, once you test it, how long it lasts in the mouth, in the cavity. So we call this as a test olfactive persistent. So let's, let's try to think about when you eat something, after half an hour, can you still feel that? Or 10 minutes after, can you still feel the smell, the test of that? So that is the test olfactive um, persistence. Okay, so how can we pair? Okay, I think this is the most important part. So how can we pair? There are about six, seven rules. The first thing, saltiness, bitterness, and sour tendency. Okay, saltiness, bitter tendency, and sour tendency are the tests that we probably don't, I mean, it's like aggressive. So we have to pair with the wine that is quite soft, the wine that is soft. Then they will try to balance each other. So this is what we call the opposite pairing principle, okay? Next, the softness. Okay, another thing that is very interesting for Asian people because we love spicy food. So sp spicy food, actually, the material, the chemical that makes the spiciness is what we call capsaicin. So capsaicin is a chemical that has to be dissolved by the softness of the wine. So wine with softness, wine with uh, roundness can dissolve the capsaicin and you will feel the balance uh, uh, very well. But be careful, don't, try, don't expect to, um, to pair something extremely spicy with the wine because it cannot go together. Okay, so small, uh, a bit of spiciness is okay to pair with the wine, with um, roundness. So, Third rule, oily food, okay, oily food. Try to think about when you eat something fried, so you feel the sensation of oil in the mouth. So this oil has to be removed, and one component that can remove is tannin from the red wine. And you probably think, and what if I prepare like lobster, salad with lobster, and I add the olive oil, can I pair this with the red wine? Actually, no, because the body of the um, lobster is not very heavy. So you can compensate this by using wine with strong alcohol. So it can be white wine with greater body. So this can compensate the tannin from the red wine. Next, 
succulent food. This is easy. Try to think about steak, medium rare. What you would drink with this? It must be red wine. It must be red wine with good tannin because tannin has a function to close your saliva gland. So the sensation that you have a lot of saliva in the mouth and the closing of the saliva gland will cancel each other and it's going to be perfect. And that's why most of the restaurants that prepare steak, they serve red wines because red wine contains tannin. All right? Next, sweet tendency. For example, now you think about Japanese food, Japanese sushi, or um, some of the Italian and uh, antipasti that you serve the nature of the food, the slide of the fish. So this has sweet tendency. Sweet tendency is going to balance well with wine with acidity. So the wine must be fresh. The young wine, the wine with good acidity is going to be best with this, okay? Next, solid fattiness. For example, cheese. So cheese. It's going to cover your tongue. So you feel that after chewing the cheese for a while, you feel like, oh, I need to drink something to clean the, I need to, I need to clean the tongue. And the good thing to clean the tongue is a wine with bubbles or the acidity. So usually if I have to con uh, consume cheese, it must be cheese with good acidity or it can be sparkling wine. But be careful because there are also certain cheese that has to go with strong red wine, but good acidity, okay? So acidity is going to be the key point in here. And the last rule is what we call parallel pairing. So there are a few things that it has to go in the same direction. One is sweetness. Sweetness is the only test that you cannot cancel it because sweetness is the test of um, the likable test. You do not want to remove the sweetness. So if you want to pair the food that is sweet already, especially um, sweet dishes, you have to choose the wine that is sweet enough. And that's why you need to have a sweet wine. Okay, so this is the rule. And other thing is going to be very simple. The food with uh, um, aromas, the food with aromaticity, the food of spiciness, you also need the wine that have this character also to go in the same direction. So that is the simple rule of wine and food pairing technique that is provided by Associazione Italiana Sommelier. And uh, well, so I just want to tell you the thing that we are going to see after. So this is the graphical technique. So the, the paper is provided from AIS, Associazione Italiana, Sommelier, the, um, the institute that I study. The technique is very simple. Um, so you have, to, um, you have to put the scale of the sensation that I explained before, and then mark that scale on this graph Okay, so you see that for um, the red color is going to be for the um, is going to be for the food. Okay, so you have to put the scale. In case that you don't have that sensation, it doesn't mean that you have to mark that scale. But we will do this together later. And uh, for the wine, it's going to be another uh, scale, and that is done by the blue color. Okay, so at the end, you link the points together. You link the points together and these are the example of the pairing technique. So you will see that after, uh, after you add the points together, you will see the, the sim similar, uh, I mean, the se uh, several shapes of the graph. Okay, in the technique of pairing, if they go in the opposite direction like this, okay, it means that the food, I mean, if the size is small, it means that the food is not very elegant. I mean, the food is not complex. The food is simple food. The wine is simple wine, but there is certain component that can balance each other. Very sharp thing that can balance each other. If the shape is like this, small, both, nothing like this peak, 
It means that both are simple food and simple wine, but they still can balance each other. Okay, so these are elegant food, very important food, very important wine, and they can pair each other very well. How about that? Now, according to what I say, this is something simple, but cannot pair each other because you can see the food has certain components cannot pair. So this is probably the example that is not good pairing, okay? And also, have other cases like uh, this one, the food and wine have the similar shape, but the size are not balanced. The red one is smaller than the blue one. It means that the food is going to be covered by the wine. And another case is going to be the case that the wine is going to be covered by the food. So if you can practice on this, I think you will understand how the food and wine can uh, get along to each other. Okay, so and that is the end of the session to today. I mean, I'm the, not the, the whole session, but just the lecture. So currently, I'm doing also um, a page uh, to provide the knowledge, and the knowledge is in Thai. But of course, on Facebook, you can translate it in your own language. And in case that you like this presentation, so you can add and follow the knowledge that I share to you guys. So thank you for the class today. And we can have the break of five minutes. So I'm going to adjust the screen because there will be the graphical papers on here. And then we will start to adjust the Y. Okay, so take a break for five minutes then. OK.
Okay, welcome back everyone. And now we will start uh, the testing, the real testing. But before we go through the testing, I would like to explain what we are going to have. So we have in total seven different bottles of wine and we have three dishes, okay? First, I'm going to let the chef to explain about the dishes that uh, he has prepared. And after we will try to pair some of the bottle with the food and some of the bottles will be just tested without the food. Okay, because we have uh, seven wines and three dishes. But I have already tried to select the one to match each one. And we will try to uh, work on this graphical technique together. And I think it's going to be fun. But first of all, uh, let me introduce the chef today, Francesco De Rosa. So could you please tell us a little bit about the dishes today? Okay, today we have uh, three traditional preparations from Italy. Uh, the first one is uh, polenta fritta. Polenta fritta is a uh, corn flour cooked in a uh, Uh, here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Other traditional recipe, this is uh, from North Italy, it's very famous in Italy, it's a vitello tonnato. Uh, this uh, part of meat is from veal, it's the leg of the veal, a year round, usually we use a year round, and we boil it, this type uh, of meat, and uh, inside uh, will be a little bit pea. Okay. If so, you have any question, let me know. Okay. Uh, I, I, su I suppose that the, the first one ha must be warm a little bit also. This one typical from North Italy. But, uh, and you need to warm it also. Ah, yes. Okay, so you can, I think this is the first one, so you can warm it. Okay, so now we start pouring the first wine. All right, thank you, chef. Thank you. How long is going to be in the, how long is going to be? Okay. Okay, so uh, how many minutes? Ten minutes? It's too much. It's too much because we have to test that. Okay. Okay, so I think we can uh, we can start to observe the wine. Okay, so 
What is this wine? This wine is the um, lightest one of today. Okay, so this is San jo This is made from Sangiovese, and actually, this is uh, Chianti Classico from 2018. So it is 13% of alcohol. The producer name is Ujano Rachalta, and this one is sponsored by Central Group. Okay, so we will test the wine first while we are waiting for the food. Um, don't drink everything at the same time because we have to leave some of the wine for the for taste with the food. Okay, so start with observation. So what is the color of this? Of course, ruby red. Okay, this is the ruby red. Um, and next step, if you want to know without testing the wine, you can stir the wine a little bit. The stirring is a little bit tricky. Be careful that don't uh, don't do it uh, too vigorously. So this way, you understand the weight of the wine, and you can also see something that is fantastic. If you remember the material I said to you before, poly alcohol, and actually this is the poly alcohol that you can observe. Okay. So in Italian, you call poly alcohol as uh, lacrima. Okay, lacrima means tears, and it looks like a tears, but in English we call lakes. So if the wine makes the lacrima like this, it means that you can expect the softness of the wine. So the wine is quite consistent, okay? Color is ruby red, but one thing that you can still see in here is good vivacity. What does it mean vivacity? Vivacity means it is linked to acid. So I expect that the wines still have a good acidity. And of course, this is Sangiovese. It should have great acidity. So let's try to smell. Mm. Tell me, what do you feel? So now it's a, it's a real workshop. So everybody work together. It is very simple, this one. Actually, it is Sherry, okay. Sherry is typical thing you will feel from Sangiovese. Okay, so this is um, red fruit, and probably you don't have plenty of uh, complexity, so this is quite complex. So now we can sip a little bit the wine. Mm. Mm. The first sip, you try to get familiar with the wine. Okay, oh, this is quite good wine. And the second sip, you try to take another sip and... Okay, this is difficult to explain. You try to pull the air in, make the air to contact with the wine in the mouth and try to, uh, try to let all the wine contact all the cavity and swallow. Okay, let's do it together. So, do you remember about what I said before? Salt. Do you feel that the wine is salty now? So, this is something that you can expect now, from now on. The wine has always salinity. People might think that, oh, the wine is not salty, but actually, it has a salinity, it has the acidity. These wine also have very sharp um, tanninsity, okay? But still, it has roundness. But I might say that this is, uh, the, the part of the roughness is quite, uh, quite precise. So now we are going to test together with the food, and let's see how the, um, the wine and food can go together. And I probably will try to mark the scale on here while you are testing. So polenta fritta, it contains, of course, uh, polenta, which is the, the corn powder, corn powder, right? Um, the oil and uh, pepper, okay. And could you please serve the second, the second one? Thank you. All right. yep. So I'm going to test with you, okay? <laughs> Mm. 
No. Mm. 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 No. After you test, try to try with the one. Okay, now I'm going to analyze this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's start with the food. The food has a sweet tendency from the nature of the corn. I might say six. Okay, the food doesn't have fattiness. Okay, so I don't put this. The food has a little bit of oiliness because it is fried. So I might say. Um, and a bit of juiciness, I, I can still feel the salivation, I put four. So for the lower part, okay, the food has a bit of salt, so I put um, three, bitterness no, sourness no, sweetness no. And the food also has the aromaticity, so I feel the original aroma of the food and also has the the, um, how can I say, the persistence of the smell. So now about the one. So okay, I have to create uh, the graphical before. So it is here. You have to link them together. This is a four, this is a five. This is the five. You have to choose the maximum on each uh, apex. Okay, and then you have to create. The so actually, like the chef said, this is uh, the non uh, it is a simple food. So you can see that the graph is not going to be very large. How about the wine? The wine is a little bit, I might say the wine is good and probably it's going to be larger than the thicker. So um, for the wine, the alcoholicity, alcoholicity is going to be six. Tanninsity is going to be seven. Okay. Saltiness, I give seven. Everversant, no, because this is not sparkling wine. Acidity, five. The upper part, sweetness, no, because it is not sweet wine. Roundness, six. Test olfactory, seven. Persistence, seven. So now you can mark on the scale. So six is here, seven is here, five is here, seven is here. Um, tanninsity, seven, six. And then, well, this is quite, um, I might say the wine goes a little bit bigger than the food, okay, in this case, but it is not that bad. So, um, of course, I think this, uh, this Sangiovese is quite a body wine. The food is simple food. So, it might be great if uh, we can... I mean, but from the figure, it is it can go. I might say they can say before the wine is a little bit uh, bigger than the food. So you can food, or if you don't want, you we can try to test the second wine. So I would suggest to uh, maybe to clean the cavity before going to the next wine. Okay, maybe a glass of water is going to be great. Okay, so now let's go to the second dish, okay, and second wine, but first second wine. So this is um, La Poyane 2017. Poyane is a name that is what we call the, the commercial name, but actually this is well, Policella Ripasso. So this is made from three different grapes plus other few number of grapes. So this is 14% and it is made by the company called Bolla. Okay. 
And uh, this bottle is sponsored by Vanish Watana. Okay, thank you very much, Vanish Watana. And okay, so we can start with uh, um, looking at the wine. So compare about this and the previous one. I might say that this one is more opaque in terms of um, color. You see that uh, it is more deeper color. So what does it mean when it is deeper in terms of color? Of course, it means that it has more extract, okay? So um, color is uh, ruby red, okay? What does it mean ruby red? Ruby red means the wine is ready, okay? The wine is ready to drink. And so we can swirl the wine a little bit. So what you can see, again, you can see lacrima, you can see the lake. So this is, this means the wine should be round, okay? You should have the roundness inside the wine. And uh, we can try to smell. Hmm. Compared to the previous one, I find this to be more uh, layers, okay? The previous one, you probably feel more sherry, but this one you probably have different layers of things that you can discover. Okay, we can take a sip. Mm. Just the first sip, I love it. <laughs> now, the second sip. Mm. This has also very precise salinity, acidity, and its tannin is less than compared to the first one. If you compare the wine, the wine, you see that the first wine is more in terms of tannin. This is softer in terms of tannin, okay? But between salinity and acidity, I feel acidity is more pronounced in this wine. The first one, you have more salinity, but this one, it has more acidity. All right, now we will try with the second dish, which is the, um, this is vitello tonato, okay? This is also my first time to try this. Even I live in Torino for one year, and this dish is from um, Piemonte, uh, as I uh, make the study before. So uh, I'm excited also. It's a cold dish, okay? Mm. I love this. <laughs> I love I love Keppa. Mm. Mm. Now try with a one. Oh this is okay, this is great. <laughs> Okay, now we are going to do the analysis. So for the food, okay, I feel sweet tendency to be quite pronounced from the meat itself, okay, it's, it's sweet tendency, it's a real sweet tendency. I don't find fatness. Juiciness, I find it because it has a salinity and it calls saliva in the mouth also. I put six. Oiliness, uh, maybe you don't feel the real oil inside. So next, I'm going to put for um, saltiness. Of course, you have caper. You have caper, so that's why it makes a saltiness in the food. So I put seven. Bitterness, no. Uh, sourness, no. Sweetness, no. Aromaticity, yes. I feel aroma, beautiful aroma. 
spiciness, um, yes, a little bit, and test effective persistence. So I can create um, the figure. This is seven, six, and uh, seven, and six here. So you can see from the figure, in case that you put the number here, you have to pick the highest number in the same, uh, in the same side and then you link everything together. Okay, and after that, for the wine, okay. Alcoholicity, uh, strong wine, seven. Tannicity, I feel it is less compared to the first one, five. And saltiness, um, so I feel six. Acidity, seven. Roundness, yes, I have. I feel the wine has a good roundness, seven. And sweetness, no. Taste of factory six, persistence. So I can create also my graph. And uh, you see that this one is going So when you link all together, I really think that this really answers my feeling about testing this dish together with the wine. I feel really enjoy compared to the first one. The first one, the wine is, is slightly um, covering the food, but this one you feel that it has the same to go together. All right, so now we can uh, put the third wine and also serve the third food. So meanwhile, you can enjoy the two dishes that, and two wines at the same time. So uh, could you please pour the third and the fourth together? Mm -hmm. So this dish we are going to test with two wines, okay? Yes. So the next dish is called caponata. Okay, caponata is from Sicily. Thank you. Okay, for the third wine, okay, um, I think if you got um, the pouring uh, first, I mean, for the first person who got the pouring, I think you probably don't have the problem, but for the last people who got the wine, you probably have uh, sediments at the end of the bottles. Um, don't worry, this is something uh, that can happen sometimes, but it is not that bad, okay? So, the third bottle, and the fourth bottle, the reason I put them together because they are from the same region and they come from the same region of the, of the Caponata, which is Sicily. So we will, uh, for, for, oh, uh, for my wine it's a little bit opaque, uh, probably, um, maybe I can explain about the third wine in, 
uh, but in case because my why is uh, a little bit um, I have uh, a little bit of set demand so I'm going to tell about the third wine then so third wine um, Corvo is called Corvo and it is uh, called I mean Corvo is the name of the company the name is R Rosso 2016 it is the mix of Nero Davola and Ner Nerello Mascalese so Nerello Mascalese is the grape that is light grape okay this is a light grape and so sometimes they try to balance the Nero Davola and Nerello Mascalese to have the the power and the softness at the same time okay so this is this bottle is also from Vanish Batana okay thank you so much and this is 13 percent in case that you don't have the sediment you can also test this one okay so I can test but I have to wait the sediment so um, this is quite bold okay bold wine because you know Nero Davola is very very heavy in terms of body and um, you probably have more red fruits in this case than uh, black fruit and more than just the fruit for Nero Davola you have also something additional for example tobacco something earthy you can find also in this wine. in case that you have the wine start to be clear you can start to sip the clear part okay my I have to wait a little bit mm. Mm. Even the wine is not clear, but I feel mm, good acidity, good body, very powerful. Okay, so now um, we can try this one with caponata. So now let's try with caponata. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Oh, I think I can finish this. <laughs> I really like carbonara. Hmm. Something you can find in carbonara is aroma, right? Aroma and sweetness also because this is yes, they add also something sweet, sweet and sour sauce. So now try with um, third white corvo. Mm. And now I will try with a fourth wine also because they come from the same land. Okay. Even they are from the same line, it doesn't mean that they are perfectly matched, okay? Okay, um, now let's do the analysis of the fourth wine. So what do you feel about the fourth wine? So the fourth wine, okay, let me explain to you about the name. So this is Feudo Macari. This is a producer. The name of the wine is Saya. So this is the commercial name. Saya 2018, it is made from 100% Nero Davola. It is 14.5%, quite strong, okay? It has very good color, ruby red, ready to drink. Mm. This is bone, quite soft. And you have also the sensation of the, the, um, um, the um, chocolate, tobacco, Yes, besides the red fruit, dark fruit, you have also this uh, evolution of the, of the something extra. So, if I have to, okay, we can do the analysis with this also. Mm. Maybe I'm going to leave Caponada to do analysis with the next two wines also. So, um, for the wine, I'm going to pick the fourth bottle. So alcoholicity, I put eight. Tannicity, I put six. City, six. And sweetness, no. Roundness, about six. Well, I don't find the big roundness in the third and the fourth wine. 
the roundness I find more in the second wine. I find the second wine repasso to be very, very round. Okay? And the olfactory is good, seven. So now. So this is a graph of my wine. So about the food, I feel sweet tendency, yes. Seven, five, no. Juicy. It feels juiciness because you have plenty of materials inside. You have caper, feel um, five, but besides that, you have also the oiliness because the um, aubergine has been uh, fried before, and you add also the olive oil. So this. Is so saltiness, yes, you have six. Bitterness, no. Sour, no. Sweetness, I feel a little bit, okay, but actually, I think I think saltiness is uh, it overrules it overrules the sweetness. This turn is quite long for the food. Um, spiciness, yes. Aromaticity, yes, a lot because I feel the food contains a lot of the material that have the natural aromas. Juiciness, uh, five, this seven. So now you can. Okay, so the food has similar um, things to balance each other. But the thing that I want to have a little bit more from the wine is the softness. So if you have a little bit of softness, I think it can pair perfectly with this. That's why I want to try it with other three wines also. So maybe we can start uh, to pour the next three wines. Okay, we will do at the, we will pour at the same time because we have to, because we have also limited time. Okay, meanwhile I'm going to talk to you about the third, uh, about the, um, the next wine. So the next wine, the producer is Canali dei Molini, and the wine name is La Q. Barbera. Okay, so this is Barbera grape, and it is from the central of Italy, well, central north of Italy. Actually, Barbera you find in Piemonte, but this one is made in Imola, which is in Reggio Emilia, the region where I study, and well, so I might I to test this for the first time. So I'm excited also to test this, to feel, to test Barbera outside Piemonte. Okay. So this one is sponsored by Central Group. So thank you so much, and. So while we are waiting for the next two wines, let me announce what are other two. So the next after the fourth wine is going to be Negro Amaro EGT. So the name is Tempio di Giano 2019. The producer is Vetrere, and this is also sponsored by Central Group. So this is going to be quite heavy wine. And the last wine, that we will test today, number seven, is Vetrere also, and it is Bar um, Barone Pazzo Primitivo, okay? And this is also from Central Group. The percentage of alcohol of these three wines is going to be quite high. That's why I put at the end of the testing. Okay, so now the wine is here with us, so we can test the fifth bottle. So this is Barbera. Oh, beautiful color. And opacity. What else? Oh, this is quite constant, uh, quite um, body wine. And you have, uh, yes, you have good lacrima. Mm, the smell. So the smell, 
、um, Vera has one typical sensation, and that is a black fruit. Before we have mostly red fruits, cherry. Okay, but this one is going to be more on black fruit. So, what are black fruits that you can can test? Blackberry, black currant, blueberry. So, these are the,、uh, the the series of black fruit that you can test. Hmm. This one is my everyday wine. I love this one. Hmm. Salinity, size. Acidity. Hmm. Perfect. So I want to test a little bit with the food. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe this one, you feel if you try caponata with this, I might say that I love I love more this combination, and I know why, because the wine, because this wine, Barbera has a very high percentage of alcohol, and it comes together with the softness, poly alcohol, and when you have the food that is very complex, that You have to add a sweetness, sourness, sweet tendency, whatever, like this, like caponata that is very complex in terms of、uh, things inside. So you probably need wine with body or softness, alcohols, softness. So that's why I feel the、um, the fifth wine goes pretty well. So.、Um, Later, I'm going to ask you which one you prefer with caponata. Okay? Maybe I'm going to ask you to raise your hand after. So now we try the fifth wine. Okay? I hope that、uh, you don't get drunk <laughs> before that. So this one. Oh, one thing that you can see when you swirl, you see that the wine is very seems to be very viscous. It seems to be like it has a lot of body. Actually, this is from Negro Amaro. Hmm. Hmm. Negro Amaro. This one has a hint of、um, sweetness. Okay, but actually, this level of sweetness is not considered to be sweetness. But I might say it is still dry. It is. I mean, it is still in the category of dry wine. But yes, compared to others. It is sweeter, right? And the smell you have,、um, you have also black fruit. Yeah, mainly black fruit. Hmm. I would like to test caponata with this also. Hmm. It turns out that caponata with this negro maro, I also like it. Yeah, because you see that the last two wines that we test, it has the softness, and the softness could go well with the complexity of the wine. Sorry, complexity of the food. So now we spend the last. Few minutes to to test the last wine, which is Primitivo, which is the star of today. Today. So this is Primitivo. If you see the color, oh, it's totally opaque. So it is the light cannot penetrate through. So you can expect the body, a lot of body inside this wine. So when you swirl, you see that it is. It is not like water. It it has like a consistent, and it makes a very good lacrima. So this, I expect to have a good roundness, and probably, I expect that it can be pair well with caponata.
Hmm. It is compared to the previous one, Negro Maro. Negro Maro, you have sensation of the sweetness, but this one is not sweetness, but it has a lot of body. It has a lot of roundness. Mm. And very good quality of saltiness, acidity, great body. Probably, I myself, this is going to be best to pair with caponata. Oh, unfortunately, I have only the few left, but still, I can test this. Hmm. Yes, it could go well with this one. So let's say that in overall, when you have food that is very complex, and this complexity goes more on the rough direction, like acidity, bitter tendency, uh, saltiness. So you probably need wine that has to be soft, okay? And so I might say that the last three wines with high alcohol, it comes together with a great body, great alcohol, great polyalcohol, great softness that can go well with uh, the um, parts of the wine. All right, um, so I think that is quite a lot for today in, in terms of testing and a lot in terms of knowledge. I hope that you enjoy um, the class today. So again, in case that okay, probably I can, um, no, it's okay. So in case that, um, yes, you have got already the, the information of the, my page and my email. So I'm more than happy to talk with you, discussing with you about the wine. So I hope you enjoy um, the wines and keep learning more about the wine in the future. So thank you so much. Grazie mille. All right, I'm going to test also something <laughs> else. So, okay, which one is which one is the best one? Uh, okay, you don't. Ha okay, this the screen has, doesn't have to uh, pan to the to the students, but I see already somebody said something. Okay. Which one is the one you like most? You can put something on your finger. Mm -hmm. Somebody cannot design. Hmm. So I will see if somebody answer something like me. <laughs> Number three is number three is uh, yeah it's um it's it's strong also but I think um, during the I think number three has been aged quite a long time it's 2016 yeah maybe certain part is lesson mm -hmm. number six, number six. Mm -hmm. 